It's possible to colour your old photographs in a couple of seconds using Photoshop's Colorize AI Neural Filter. You can, however, quite easily run into issues when using artificial intelligence-based colorization. I'm therefore going to show you how to fix the worst of these problems quickly, so you can produce some really impressive results in a fraction of the time it would take to do this manually. As a slight side note, I've also made a tutorial on using AI restoration, and I'll be using the final restored image from that tutorial in this video. That video will be linked below. First things first, we need to get our image ready for colorization. To do that, we need to check the colour settings for the file. Under the menu Image, and then Mode, if our image is set to grayscale, we need it to be an RGB colour instead. For those following on from the restoration tutorial, before you potentially change to RGB, you'll want to hold down the Control key, Command key on a Mac, and click on each of your existing layers to select them all. You'll then want to right click, possibly Control click on a Mac, and choose Convert to Smart Object. Now when you change to RGB colour, you'll be asked if you want to rasterize the layers, and you can safely select Don't Rasterize. The beauty of a smart object is that you can always double click your layer preview to reopen your original restoration file. We can now add more filters, layers and masks to our smart object layer without causing any conflicts with the ones we used in the restoration tutorial. With all of us now set to RGB colour, we can start. If we go up to Filter, Neural Filters, we can open the Neural Filters menu. We can see the Colorize filter listed with a little toggle switch to turn it on and off. If you've not used this filter before, you may have to download it over on the right hand side. Once we switch on the filter, we'll get our initial draft colorization to work from. That is assuming our auto color image checkbox is ticked on, which it should be by default. Looking at this draft result, we can see that for areas like the face and hair, it's colored them really well, but the rest of the picture is a bit of a mess. I will say it would have been a considerably larger mess before we restored the image in the previous tutorial. As you can see from this comparison, on the left we have the results of this AI on an unrestored version of the image, and on the right we can see how it performed here on a restored version. So always consider restoring your pictures before you colour them, it may drastically improve your results. In terms of the issues we still have however, we can see that the ribbon she has around her neck has tricked the AI into believing her dress is in three parts. One part it has coloured yellow, one pink, and one blue, and the background has suffered a very similar fate with parts of it now being brown. So we'll start by correcting the multicoloured background. If we look over to our black and white preview image on the right, we can see the text focal points written above it. If we move our mouse over the black and white image, we can see that our cursor becomes a small target symbol. If I then click on a brown part of the background on the black and white image, we bring up our colour picker, or focal point colour selector. This gives us the option to manually set colours for parts of the image. In this case, I would like the background to be kind of eggshell blue, so I'll drag my slider to the blue part of the colour spectrum and select a tone that I feel is appropriate, and then press OK. In this case, I feel that this blue is a little strong, so I'll click my focal point to reselect it, and then click my colour swatch to choose a more pale tone of blue. Obviously the right hand side of the image is still the original colour of blue, but we can easily correct that. If we hover over the focal point we added, it tells us that we can press Alt Option and drag to duplicate. Alt is the key to hold down for Windows, Option being the key to hold down for Mac as we drag. So for me, I'll hold down the Alt key and duplicate this focal point to the right hand side of the image. We can then do this a few more times to make the background one consistent colour. As you may imagine, we can also use this same method for the dress. When we add a new focal point for the dress, it will default to the previously used colour. However, we can select a focal point as we did before, and click the colour swatch to correct it to our chosen colour. Again, we can Alt or Option drag this focal point to duplicate it as many times as we need. You may find that these focal points overly influence the colours around them. You may therefore need to either add extra points for competing areas, or reduce the strength slider on an overly influential focal point. If you want to remove a focal point entirely, you can do so by selecting it and clicking the little negative symbol next to Remove. Adding only a few focal points, most of them duplicates, vastly improved that initial colorization. But there's even more we can do. Unfortunately, most of the manual tweak controls that are offered to you within the neural filter itself are not very useful. Under Profile, for example, we have the option of adding a stylistic filter to our colors. I think these are designed to make it look as if the colorized photograph was taken on old colour film, but at least for this picture, they just make it look bad I feel. We do have some controls here to alter the overall colours of the image that are reasonably okay. 
We can alter the saturation of our colours to make them more or less intense, for example. We can also use these sliders to change the overall red, green and blue tones to our image. However, I feel that these adjustments to colour can be done far more effectively outside of this filter, as I'll show you momentarily. The last two adjustments are to reduce colour artefacts and noise. I would tend to say that reducing colour artefacts is designed to reduce blobs of incorrectly placed colour, but it generally removes more colour than you would want. Noise reduction will remove overall grain from the image, but it will also reduce detail levels, so it's something you'll want to experiment with yourself. I'm already happy with the restoration we did in the previous tutorial, so I'll leave it switched off. Before we move on to the next steps of colouring, we have to decide how we wish to work with this filter in Photoshop. The first thing we see under Output Options is a checkbox named Output as New Colour Layer. We can quickly tick this box to get an idea of what is happening with this option. So with this option ticked, we can save purely the colour without any details. We could then apply it over our untouched black and white image. I'm going to untick this again, as we'll be talking about colour layers more in a moment, and we also won't be using this output method in this tutorial. I just wanted to show you what it did. With that box unticked, we can export our colorization as a new layer or a new layer masked. We can also save this colorization out to a new document and start a whole new Photoshop file. The only other option we have, and I feel it's the best one, is to select to output a smart filter. We'll select that one, press OK, and I'll tell you why we did. So the first great thing about a smart filter is that it gives you a mask to work with automatically, which I'll demonstrate in a moment. The second great thing about a smart filter is that you can easily turn it off by clicking this little eye visibility toggle. The best thing of all, however, is the ability to double click our neural filter on the layer and change our colorization settings at any point in the process. If you decide you want to change something about your color choices, you can easily do so at any point. I will say that smart filters are a little more intensive for the computer to use, so if you run into performance issues, you can instead use new layer masked as your output option instead. Looking at this image as it stands now, we have a few more things to correct. We can see that this area next to her ear is incorrectly coloured. Her lips need a bit of work, and I feel this ribbon is rather intense and should be corrected to be both darker and browner. Earlier on, we had the option to export our colorization as purely a colour layer. While we didn't do that, we can use that same colour layer principle to patch our image. To start the process, we can create a new layer with this little cross within a square icon in the bottom right. By default, with this layer selected, if we were to select the paintbrush tool and attempt to paint on our image, we'd just paint on top of the image. If we select our new layer, however, we can change how it behaves. This little pull down box, which should be defaulted to say normal, allows us to select how this layer will interact with those below it in the layer stack, in this case, our colorized layer. By selecting our upper layer and changing the layer mode from normal to color, we can see that our paint remains, but now it's only affecting the colour of the image, not the details. What we want to do is patch where mistakes were made by the automatic colouring, by painting on a new layer above it. So first we find an area of the image that needs to be manually recolored, such as this loop below her ear. Secondly, we sample a colour from our image that is correct, such as the rest of the background. We can do that by using the eyedropper tool on the left, which can also be reached by hitting the I key, an even easier way to do this is simply to hold down the Alt or Option key, depending on if you're on Windows or Mac, while using the brush tool and clicking. That way you don't have to switch from the brush tool and you can easily patch multiple areas at once. So while using the brush tool, I'll hold down my Alt key and click on the background before releasing the Alt key again. Now I can simply paint the blue from the background over the incorrectly coloured paint. Remember that the open and close bracket keys can be used as a shortcut to change your brush size. And one last little quick tip for this, we can use the blur tool to gently soften the colour edges on that upper layer. These next few steps are a little more advanced and optional, so if this result is already what you were looking for, feel free to move on and please consider giving the video a like. However, I will go through these more advanced steps as quickly as I can and I really think they add a lot to the image. I mentioned earlier that we had ways to adjust the colours that were better than those within the colorized neural filter. We use those now. If you move down to this little half black and white ball in the bottom right, you can click it to add a new adjustment layer. Adjustment layers sit above other layers in your file and make changes to all of them at once. We want to add one for hue and saturation. This adjustment layer will function exactly the same in terms of end result as those controls within the colorized neural filter. However, you will also gain a lot of manual control over how those end results are delivered, 
and any changes you make to the adjustment layer will also apply to our repairs layer, as the adjustment layer will be influencing them both. When we're in master mode, changes we make to our hue and saturation sliders will affect all the colours within our image. I'll move the sliders here to demonstrate. If we want to adjust just a single colour, we can click the master menu to instead select from all the individual colours within the image. For example, here we're altering just the red tones in the image. There's an even easier way to do this however. We can simply select this little hand icon and click on our image to select a colour that we wish to alter. So I can click her skin and change our hue and saturation for the red tones, or click our background and change the hue and saturation for our blue tones. The two areas I want to correct are the colour for the lips and this ribbon. So for us to make it more accurate, we need to try and tone down the lips. If anyone from Adobe is watching this, please add a makeup slider to the colorization settings. Us making an image-wide colour adjustment to dial down the strength of this lipstick will not work, as the skin itself contains the same pink tones as the lipstick. Therefore, we need to make a targeted adjustment to just the lips. We're going to do that using a layer mask. I have made a full tutorial for layer masks which will help explain in depth how they work and give lots of useful shortcuts and tips, so generally I'd advise giving that video a watch if you've never used masks before. In quick terms however, a layer mask blocks out, or masks, parts of a layer, so that they are not visible. If we add another hue and saturation layer, we can see that it automatically comes with this layer mask attached to it. By default, it's a fully white square, so nothing is masked. If we make the square fully black, this adjustment layer will be, in effect, invisible and have no influence over the picture. Therefore, if we make it half black and half white, as in this example, we can see that only the parts of the mask that are white are being affected. So starting with a fully black mask selected, we can paint on it with our brush using white and make targeted adjustments to our image. I find it helpful in this situation to temporarily reduce our hue and saturation layer's saturation completely while masking a layer like this. That way, wherever we paint is immediately obvious, as it will be completely grey. Once we've finished painting, we can raise the saturation again and make changes to the hue as needed. With the lips made more historically authentic, we can repeat that exact same series of steps by adding yet another hue and saturation layer for the ribbon. With that done, our image is coloured. Now I'll say that in my opinion, while AI can technically speaking colour your image, if you really want to bring life to it, I'd recommend watching my full length colourisation tutorial video. There are lots of little extra touches to the process, even if you decide to start with an AI coloured image, that would improve that image even further. That tutorial and all the others I mentioned will be linked below. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a like or subscribing as that really helps out my channel. Thanks for watching.